Hi, this is Jody, and I'm going to show you another write-up, video write-up, video op, or whatever it should be called, on the awesome Dead Face CTF 2021. As I told you in the previous video, this is one of the finest uh, challenges I played with my team. Uh, I was going to show you the traffic analysis, but decided to show you the more advanced one. These are all built up on the head of the other previous one. There is a file in many of the traffic analysis uh, challenges. You have a pickup file, which is a TCP dump of the whole traffic on a machine, and they ask you different questions. Here we have on a, from the X machina, we have one file which is downloaded here. It's about uh, 30 megabytes PCAP, which is considered large. And on each question, you have to extract more and more data. Even it says, okay, the hacker have downloaded two files. You have to extract those files among all the packets and these kind of stuff. And somewhere in a more advanced level, it says scanners. As you can see, still 100 points for it. And it says, Lucifer started the hack of the Litton Labs victim by performing a port scan. He started by port scan using most probably the nmap command. Which TCP ports are open on the victim's machine? Enter the flag as the open port, separated by commas, no spaces, in numerical order. Disregard port numbers higher than 60,387. Four. Example this. Use the pickup from the first questions. If you are confused, we can check for the hints. But here we don't need them. I know what I'm doing. This is the pickup opened in the Wireshark program. Pickup is a dump of the uh, network communication. And Wireshark is a nice tool, very advanced one, to show them. Normally, you have lots of packets. This is a packet number, packet one, time this. This was the source. We had a communication from this source going to this destination. It was a DNS protocol and it was standard querying something. It was checking Mozilla network. Then you got an answer back from 111, which said, okay, Mozilla goes to this. All the communication is recorded here. If you've been told that you have to separate a file which was downloaded via, I don't know, FTP, you can search for a FTP protocol. You can write different things here and do the uh, checks on how you want to get the data, for example. You should say, okay, I want all the FTP data or whatever. Here we are looking for the TCP dump, uh, sorry, for the Nmap. What Nmap does? In most cases, and most probably what happened here, the hacker will run the nmap and target one IP. The nmap will check every single port there and will answer back. Again, this depends on the switches you use, but the question indicates that it was searching for all the open ports. So most probably this happened. So you are sending lots of packets to the victim, to different ports, and look for the answers back from different ports. If you know about the uh, TCP flow, you will know how this works. Also, you need to understand the Nmap here. I'm not going to talk much about them. You can search for them. But normally what Nmap does, it sends a packet to one specific port, first 80, then 81, then 82, and waits back for the answer. We know that there are 6,000 something ports. Uh, so, we should have lots and lots of errors returning back because all the ports are closed. So easily, if you browse in the whole uh, PCAP, you will find where these errors are. See, I'm just browsing and this is the end map. You can say red and every single one is one request from this server. As you can see, server 103 is sending a request to server 106 from this port is checking this port and it's sending a reset ACK. Huh? It shouldn't send reset ACK. Let's go further. Okay, this is the test. These were the answers. So 
the hacker was checking 103. This is the attacker. For example, here, server 106 is sending to this port a SYN packet. If you don't know what the SYN packet is, search for the TCP flow, TCP handshake, and you will see how it works. Every time, sir, the attacker is checking on the target one port and will wait for the answer back. For example, on the first one we said, the attacker is checking for, for port 63531, sending a scene. Somewhere you should see the answer back from this port. Let's scroll a little bit. This is it. Where was the... Let me make it larger. These are the two. See? Here, the attacker is asking the target, please answer back on this port. I have sent a scene for you. The target will answer back from the same port with a reset and ACK. This reset and ACK means this port is closed. If this is not the reset ACK, and this is like C, ACK, it means the port is open, continue, what do you want to do? So the Nmap will just reset the connection and we'll know, okay, this port is open. So what we should do? What we can do is we can check every single packet from the target, like this ones, where the flags are seen and ACK. And if we find one, it means this port is open. Normally, not normally, first idea is, okay, I will browse the whole 6,500 lines and 65,000 lines and check for this which is very, very difficult and kind of impossible. Another way is writing a query here and say, I want all the packets where on the IP level, the source address is this and the flags are that. A little bit easier, we filter out these, but still you will have lots and lots of lines. Better way is using the SCAPI. SCAPI is a tool which can which lets you programmat programmatically work with PCAP files. You say f equals read PCAP. Ah, the name of that file is too difficult. I have it here, like. It reads this PCAP line by line, packet by packet. Then we can kind of do programming on this. You can also use this inside your Python scripts. And when you run it directly, as I did here, as you can see, Scappy, it will give you a rep line, rep like command line, which is a Python with Scappy enabled. Now I have the F. If you say len of F, it is 1060, ah, 160,000 line. Sorry, English is not my language if you have not guessed yet. So, what we need to do. Let's check the same packet we had here. Which one was it we were testing? I just scrolled. Okay, let's check this one. Here, it's numbered 927, 73. Hmm. Uh, where is my... Ah, it's in the here. 92773. So you can say I want to 92773. As you can see, programmers do not need to have great memory. This is the same line we had here. Ah, this starts from one, this starts from zero. So I have to check the two because zero is the first one there. This is the same packet we had. This is the Ethernet pack, uh, capsulation level, 
Ethernet part, which is the correct word. This is the IP part. This is the TCP part. I can separate this. For example, if I say uh, my packet is this one, just for the testing purpose. And I say my packet, give me the IP part. It will give you only the IP part. If you say, give me the source of the packet, it will be this one. If you say P TCP part, it will give you the TCP part and you will check for the flags. Okay? And you can always check like this. R in flags. It is because it's RA reset ACK. Also, you can check like this. If flags equals RA. So, what I need? I need to act whenever packet source is this and flags is seen ack. In this case, the victim is answering back, okay, continue. So the port is open. I want this case. Okay, so now it is false because about this packet, it doesn't work. What I can do is I can say ports equal set, all the open ports. Then I can say for P in F, check for every single packet. If, ow, I missed that. Okay, is SA and P. IP, sorry, source equals, what was it? 100, I think so. If this is the case, ports at what? P, TCP, uh, source port because I'm contacting from the source port. If it works fine, this is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to say, check every single packet you see, okay? If the source is this, and if the flags are seen, ACK, which is the correct answer, then save this, because this port was open on this server. So let's go for this. I've seen this before. Uh, it's crashed because some of the packets doesn't have a TCP layer. Not all packets do have TCP layer. So I have to just try this and say, try to do this. If you can't, just pass to the next packet. It will check all the packets. If, if any of the packets initiated from this server with seen ACK, it means the source port is open and is answering back. So add it to the ports. So I have the op all the open ports. As you can see, they have added a lot of nonsense open ports. So if you are trying to just search by your eyes like an eagle or a wolf among all these lines, you will have a very, very difficult life. You had to write a program. So this is the answer. Always in the question, it says how to submit the flag. Flag should be submitted like this. So my flag will be this. This is why I'm telling you that it's good to learn new tools. It's good to play CTF. When you play CTF, you learn new things. Maybe half an hour ago, you didn't knew about SCAPI. Maybe you didn't knew about even TCP dumps or other issues. I'm going to publish this after the competition is finished. In one hour, they will release new challenges and we will go for them. Let's see what will happen. I hope you enjoyed. As always, search for... CTF time and play.
next CTFs, upcoming events. You can always enroll in them and learn new stuff. Make teams, make friends, and go forward. It's not frightening to teach other people what you know. It's frightening when you are just dependent on what you know. You should be a process. You should be in process, maybe a better word. You should be able to learn new things and advance all the time. That's what makes a hacker. Hope you enjoyed. This was Jadi. Please subscribe. I will enjoy too. Thank you.